Worcester's Best Chef. It is almost time to be here. We've got a couple of Worcester's Best Chefs with us right now. And Dominic, the man behind uh, Worcester's Best Chef, how many years now? This is going to be our 10th year. It's the 10th anniversary, wow. Hank. That's great. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's a real milestone. This is an it event is. that has grown each and, and every year, one that people look forward to. Yeah. And give us some of the details about this year's coming up. I love it. I love talking about it because um, when you ask people if they've heard of it, you either get one of two responses. Of course I have. Or, yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. Either they're a little bit concerned, you know, they don't want to say that they haven't heard of it, they're embarrassed, or they, you know, they've definitely heard of it. So we're glad. It's been running really strong. This year it'll be January 29th. It's always the week before the Super Bowl because we want to take advantage of the fact that people have cabin fever mm -hmm. after the holidays. They've been indoors for about a month and they want to get out and uh, they love getting out for an event like this. And this year is going to be neat because we're pulling in these guys on the wings right here. We're pulling in chefs from the last nine years that are either uh, have either been Iron Chef winners or have mm -hmm. placed in the top three. So they're uh, finalists or winners. So it's going to be really what we call this year the best of the best. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Bill, you were last year's winner. Yeah. Uh, it was the good luck because you came on the show last year before the event, so that was fantastic. That's, that's uh, what it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> Tell us a little bit uh, about last year and what happens at the Iron Chef competition. Uh, absolute chaos is what happens at the Iron Chef competition. Uh, they give you a basket of uh, ingredients. You don't know what they are. It's a mystery basket. Um, and then they say, everyone, open their basket, and you're, you're competing against two other uh, talented chefs and then uh, you go to town you really at least I could speak for myself I start cooking and start prepping before I have any idea of mm -hmm. what the final mm -hmm. uh, the final dish you're is hoping for be. inspiration to strike and it's just gonna come to well you. you have a limited amount of time so uh, you just get to work and then um, hopefully it comes to you you know halfway through the the preparing what came to you preparation uh, last year we had some uh, w well it was the year of the meatball they call it because we had ground lamb, and so there, you know, with ground lamb, there's, there's uh, not much you can do with it, but the, the you know, so uh, as it just so happens, two of the chefs on the stage uh, prepared a meatball, so um, we made a, a lamb meatball, and that's what, that's what uh, ended up uh, winning the trophy. So. I love this trophy, by the way. This is this is fantastic. Uh, can you describe your feeling as as you were receiving that that trophy? Uh, it was exciting. Uh, you know, I, I've competed in uh, the Worcester's Best Shop uh, competition since the first year, and um, several times I've been lucky enough to place. I've been up on stage once and competed in the Mystery Basket, but I didn't win. Um, so after so many years of competing and uh, coming real close but never winning, I finally, I finally got the... Uh, the, the, the chalice, the cup. Yeah, I mean, it's a, little, it's a little different each year. Dominic, did you ask them to bring these, or do they just carry them around no. uh, <laughs> with them wherever they may go? They just say, well, I'll just run out to the car and well, bring you know, it in. You, you know how people dangle CDs from their, from their rear view mirrors <laughs> yeah, yeah. to throw yeah, off? This, the, is yeah. what, this is what they have. <laughs> That's what these guys uh, do. Uh, Tim, tell me a little bit about, about your story. And, and, and what I'm curious about is Lock 50 right now, where you are down at the bottom of uh, Grafton Hill, the Canal District. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a place that has taken off and is so incredibly successful this year. Was winning the Iron Chef, I mean, is, is that a springboard then for when you went and opened up Lock 50? Uh, absolutely. Um, I feel it helped, um, you know, give me a boost of confidence to really take the reins um, for a kitchen of my own. Um, I remember when Lock, before Lock 50 opened, it had that big banner, and one of the things that it said on the banner, of course, was, you know, was, was Worcester's Best Chef. I mean, it was a real, uh, clearly, obviously, a selling point, and it really has taken off in, in Worcester, guys. And, I, and, and don't be, you know, no false modesty here. Tim, people know you. I mean, right? I mean, people know who you are. I mean, people come to check out what it is that you do and, they do. and, and create. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, so we definitely have Dominic, and, and probably Worcester's Best Chef has a lot to do with this, this culture of some really well-known chefs in the area. Yeah, well, I, I always try for more and more and to do more and more, and now and then my wife says, you don't understand something. I see banners up everywhere, and that event kind of helps people here. And I says, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. these guys are talented on their own. All we do is give them a stage. If they make it, they make it, you know. This guy was uh, at Volturno previously, and the interesting thing about that was Neil Rogers was also at Volturno before that, and then he won WBC, and then he got immediately, I, I think he, I don't know how it happened or, or why it happened, he's a tremendously talented chef. He's mm. now, I believe, the corporate chef de cuisine for Niche, Niche Hospitality Group, which owns Bocado and Mezcal, and so he's, uh, he's been very busy working um, for uh, Mike Covino and his team, and um, and then next year, right after, 
this guy took the reins of yeah. Volturno and won, and, and I'm so glad he's doing what he's doing. I hear a lot of great things from yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, it, it's so competitive, guys, too, and, and Tim, I mean, you know, just having opened up and everything uh, well, <coughs> within a year. It is so competitive in Worcester. Help, hurt, how does, uh, I mean, what do you think has, has made Lock 50 such a big hit? Uh, well, I think the competition is good. It uh, pushes us as chefs to, you know, better ourselves and yeah. bring something new to the table. And Bill, actually, since last year, you were at the International when we spoke last year. Now, yep. you actually are in, in, uh, in Sturbridge now. Yeah, I mean, I still work for the International mm -hmm. as a, a consulting role. I'm just not there full time. Uh, the crew that I set there, um, they're taking over the reins there. And I've gone to uh, help uh, uh, my best friend, uh, Brian Treitman over yeah. at BT's, who is another person that's going to be competing. So me and oh, my really? best friend will be <laughs> we're going mano a mano right next to one another uh, in the competition as well. And um, yeah, it's so, you know, me and Tim are friends, me and Chris are friends. We're all, uh, it's, a, it's a great competition and it's the, uh, one of the few times of the year where we get to go and all hang out together as uh, chefs. We aren't competing, we all want to win, right, yeah. right. but it's, it's great fun. <clears throat> See, I, and it's, so it's a great event, it's obviously a great event for the chefs, chefs uh, Dominic, for the people who are coming yeah. to Worcester's Best Chef, what do they get to experience? Oh, well if they're VIP attendees, which th th that would mean they come in just shortly before 4 p.m., they get the whole venue to themselves with these guys. So essentially, Hank, they'll come in and they'll have uh, the whole Boyden Salon as their own private room. We've added that this year. This year, VIP guests get their own room. Big, big room. They get um, you know, some champagne throughout, the, uh, throughout their one-hour reception before the event kicks off at 5 o'clock to the general public. But um, in addition to that, there's a photo uh, mob of what we call a paparazzi photo mob. They get your picture taken as you come through. Um, and they get some face time, importantly, with the chefs. Mm. They get a chance to talk to the chefs, ask them why they make what they make, how they made what they made. Um, they basically get a chance to kind of interview and, and bounce things off of the chefs. And, you know, if you're in this world today, this foodie world, where Food Network is so hot right now, and you get a chance to sit before and stand before great chefs like these guys and Chris Rovezzi, who's going to be with us in the next segment, you're lucky. Because if you have any interest in food and you get a chance to get confirmation that what you do is right, right or right. In, or instruction as to what to yeah, do better yeah, yeah that's cool you know it's kind of neat i was going to say so that brings us then uh before we bring chris in here what do we have here uh, i made a blue cheese panna cotta which uh normally you see as a dessert uh this is a savory take on that i have some uh pickled squash radicchio roasted apples with a little salad and then a little drizzle of pine cone syrup mm. and a little bit of crushed walnut brittle with some winter savory. Fantastic. It I is. love that. Tim, thanks so much for bringing it in. Boy, we've only got about about uh, 30 seconds left here. How much do you love? I mean, you know, you guys both have, have won the, the, the Iron Chef and everything. How much do you love creating something new? Like, I mean, you know, now you go from the International to go to Sturbridge and everything. How much do you love creating something new in the kitchen? Oh, uh, we do it every day. I mean, this is what we live for. This is why we do what we do. Uh, we, we try to push the boundaries and um, it's getting more and more difficult to create something new because, you know, great <laughs> chefs like Tim are, are, are doing the same thing, you know, and, you, and so oftentimes you find that this has already been done, you know, and you, you find out after the fact, you know, so um, <laughs> we're, we're always doing it and it, it's fun, you know, it's... Uh, but each one is an artist, so they bring a whole different take on it. Well, this is the, the part of it, and, we, and, and we're going to bring uh, Chris up in just a second, Dominic, and we'll talk more about Worcester's Best Chef. This is the part that has always fascinated me. Uh, that I guess I don't remember as much growing up, but now a little bit over these last 10 yeah. years with you, is, is how much of an art form it is, even just, even just here, uh, you know, to just present this for, for, for us. Uh, yeah. You know, it, lo it just looks absolutely uh, gorgeous. So just even the way that it's just plated is such a, uh, is such a art form in and of itself. All right, we've got much more to come. We're gonna tell you much more about Worcester's Best Chef so that you can make sure that you get your tickets because it is a complete sellout each and every year. And we'll do that straight ahead. I'm the Hank Stoltz Experience. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. Join us Friday nights during Worcester News Tonight at 10 and 11 p.m. for the Community Advocates Life Up and Down Route 9 exclusively on Worcester News Tonight and Charter TV Free. 
Finding local Central Mass sports coverage has never been easier with the all-new CharterTV3.com. Just hover along the easy-to-read navigation bar to sports. Scroll down the drop-down menu to check out sports videos. Follow our Friday Night Football Frenzy show series. Find our local covered game schedule or click on the sports header at the top for the sports directory. Visit the all-new CharterTV3.com today. You can't get Worcester weather from a Boston TV station. The sun could be shining in downtown Boston, but the weather could be very different here in Worcester. People tell me all the time how much they count on our weather forecast, and we know how important that is to our Worcester News Tonight viewers. Each weekday, we'll give you your weather, your 10-day forecast for right here in Worcester, only on Worcester News Tonight. Worcester's only local forecast, weeknights on Worcester News Tonight. Just like in baseball, good sports reporting relies on the bullpen. There are days when our front man just doesn't have his stuff anymore. What is he doing? This is brutal. I think it's Grafton. It could be Bartlett. It's a green and white team. You don't have it's tonight. You're done. Son of a bitch. I fucking have it. Tell me I don't. I can still bring it. Yes. Time. All right. That's actually Bartlett versus Milbury, and it's Tom Duchesne for. I'm just glad I can be a role guy here. Join Brad Kane from the Worcester Business Journal every Monday evening during Worcester News Tonight at 10 p.m. on Charter TV 3 for the Worcester Business Journal's Central Mass Business Report. Catch all the latest business news that impacts your bottom line. Oh, eat it. Don't you tell me you're full, just eat it, eat it, eat it. Talking about Worcester's best chef, and it is coming up. Dominic here telling us about it. Dominic, you had mentioned that you're bringing back winners from all, it is the 10th anniversary coming up, you're bringing back all these winners, and one of those is sitting right next to you, Chris Ravezzi. Yes, yes, the 10th anniversary, we, we, you know, we had a great idea. I have to give proper credit to Al Makel, who um, owns Evo and The Living Earth. The Living Earth uh, in Worcester and Evo is um, his restaurant that he started with, but now he transformed it into bootleggers. Uh, it's a great restaurant um, right on Chandler Street, and he came up with the idea of, why don't you take all of your previous winners and put them against each other? And I said, we'd need to, like, up the security detail by about 20. Because <laughs> these guys know each other, they love each other, but they, they come to win. You know, no, and this is survivor. a great Hunger example. Hunger Games, something. Yep. Yeah. It is. It's really, literally yeah. the Hunger Games. This guy is great. To my left is Chris. He was um, one of the two winners. He was the People's Choice winner in our inaugural year, 2007 at Union Station. And... Uh, it's a great story. Chris tells it very well, and uh, we're so glad he came back because he's won since then, of course, too. He's right. won Iron Chef since then, uh, and he's been doing really well in the story. Well, Chris, so tell us a little bit about that, the very first one. Uh, uh, frightening is, uh, <coughs> is all I can say. Well, no, we showed up, you know, raring to go as everybody else did, but once, once we entered that room, it was a Union Station, gigantic yeah. room, and uh, we set up in the corner. And I just, at some point, I looked around and I saw, you know, in our state, in the central Massachusetts, the giants of the culinary world. And something just kind of hit me. Uh, you know, this wave came over me. I looked at my guys to the left and the right of me, and I said, the, the exit door is right behind us. <laughs> Before anybody notices, we can, we can sneak out and, and nobody will be the wiser. It was, I was actually that scared um, because it, it I mean, these guys are great. They, they they were already the best of the best. So yeah. uh, it was it was a. Now, do you do you remember what you made that uh, that, that day? year? I I decided to uh, knowing that most chefs were going to kind of bring out um, not only the best dish but try to use the the best most recognizable ingredients, mm -hmm. uh, which translates to most expensive ingredients. Yeah. Uh, I decided yeah. to take a wild stab in the dark and do uh, what was known as a peasant dish from. Uh, area where my father's family came from in Italy. So I took, um, I, I made a, a homemade pasta, which is very inexpensive and very basic, and, and took a piece of, uh, a throwaway piece of meat, that's what people would call it, it was uh, oxtail. Um, and I made a ragu out of the oxtail, and I made, I made some ravioli to go with it, and it really is, I wanted people to see that um, you could have delicious food that was very, very inexpensively made. Now, now, what is this in front of us right here? So this is the dish that uh, uh, thankfully won uh, me the um, Iron Chef. Iron Chef, Chef. Uh, yeah. in 2012. Yeah. And yeah. this 
the dish that I created was uh, uh, grilled bison. And again, I'm kind of known as the pasta guy in our area, so I made some homemade ravioli filled with, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, turnip and ricotta cheese um, filling, and then gorgonzola dolce over the top, which it, all that means is sweet gorgonzola sauce. Right. And again, it was after talking to the judges after that day, they said that the, the simplicity was what steered them towards... Uh, no oxtail in this one. <coughs> no oxtail in this one, the, no. Uh, hidden ingredient. No, the, and that's true, what he said about the judges liking simplicity. The judges always give us mm -hmm. feedback. We've got some um, six to seven judges each year, depending on the year, and they always tell us they want simplicity because in their minds, Hank, nearly anybody can come into an event and put, you know, foie gras or maybe, you know, um, um, filet mignon with uh, some type of a lobster or thermidor or something. And, and make it look impressive. But it's the chef that's a true culinarian, a real mm. genius, that can take something simple like Chris did, braised oxtail, and make it look stellar. It was interesting that year, too, because people would come up and say, braised oxtail? Yeah, braised oxtail. <laughs> and he would say, it's braised oxtail. What's, what's that? It's the tail of an ox. No, really, what is it? It's they the it tail of an ox. They say, well, it's not oxtail, so <laughs> it's really like, it's was it a really chicken dish? The tail, it, you know. <laughs> That's funny. That was one That's of those funny. fancy names. But but you have uh, said, as we got a couple of minutes here, that, of course, you're bringing back, and you just talked about how nervous you were in the, in the first one. Now you're bringing back people who have all won. You're putting them all <clears> in the same room together. How is this going to work? Well, it's, it's the winners from the last nine years, the Iron Chefs that, from the last nine years or the, or the top three finalists from the nine, last nine years. And um, a couple of them have gone away, different states and mm -hmm. so forth. But we got a pretty good representation coming up this year. And um, fortunately, you know, they all know each other and they kind of keep up with each other. Mm -hmm. The culinary world is pretty tight knit, Hank. These guys um, keep up with each other, encourage each other. They follow each other on social media. They talk to each other. They hang around together, you know. Matter of fact, Chris is very good friends with the two guys that were here a few minutes right. ago, Tim Russo right. and Bill Nemiroff. So um, they're looking to beat each other up, but good. So but in a friendly a, way. Yeah, it's going to be know? great. It's going to be a very special year. Then. Yeah. So people need to get their tickets. I mean, we have to warn people, this does sell out. And it it does. sells out quickly. For anybody who thinks that you're here <laughs> early, but this coming up on January 29th, no, get your tickets now. On top of it, we're trying to reduce the amount of people that come to the event by selling less tickets this year because Mechanics Hall is our preferred venue. We yep. love it. It's an elegant place. It's not a big corporate You don't function. want people standing in line. Yep, it's not a, a big yeah, event hall. Of time. It's nice. So it's, it's valet parking, but um, uh, the VIP uh, hour is great because people get a champagne um, uh, glass when they walk in. They get the VIPs get their own room this year, which is kind of a nice oh, plus. Nice. Beer tasting, nice. cocktail tastings from Campari America. They're going to oh. be here. They're at the Grupo, Grupo Campari from yeah. from Europe, and then also a bunch of wine tastings. It's going to be fantastic. It's gonna really be three schools to too. Yeah, Thank Worcester you Tech for is back. Oh, uh, Bay Path is be back. There. It is the 10th, was back. 10th anniversary. Make sure that you get your tickets, guys. Thanks for, for coming. We'll dig in thank you. here. Thank you, uh, <laughs> And thank you for joining us, as always, on the Hank Stoltz Experience.